preparing to live stream. Perfect. Okay, and we're live. Well, welcome everybody. Hi, hi everyone. It's so fantastic to see everybody. It's been a while. So welcome back to our virtual meetup. My name is Danielle Stein Fairhurst. I am based in Sydney in Australia. I am back. I'm back in Sydney. Uh, I actually got to, uh, borders are now open and I got to go overseas for the very first time in uh, several years. So I was in the UK for a couple of weeks and I just got back. So uh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, my job as, as a meetup host is to bring to you various speakers from around the world on different topics that are of interest to financial modelers. And today we are joined by Faraz Sheikh. He is based in Saudi Arabia, where I hope to go. I'm actually hoping to go to Saudi Arabia later this year. Fingers crossed um, that uh, that works out. So um, Faraz is, uh, yeah, a Microsoft MVP. I won't tell you too much about him because I think he's going to tell us a bit. So, um, yeah, it is very early in the morning for you, Faraz. Is it it's about 4.30 in the morning? Is that right? Yeah, it's 4.30 in the morning right oh, now. Goodness. Wow. So thank you so much for joining us. So you've um, it's Ramadan right now, yeah? Yes, yes, it's Ramadan and we're fasting everyone over here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, uh, without further ado... Hi, everybody. We've got, gosh, we've got people in Tanzania, Brisbane, Canada, Melbourne, lots of lots of Australians. Oh, we've got someone from Peru, India, all over the place. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. So, yeah, tell us tell us what we're going to be. We're going to be talking about Power Automate today for us. Yes, uh, we'll be talking about Power Automate. We'll see that how we can utilize the automation technology in our day-to-day -day work. And we'll try to do some hands-on demo so I'll be very quickly uh, going to share my screen right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Welcome, Australia. We have lots and lots of people from Australia, but also all over the world. Mm, so, wow. Wonderful. Yeah. So it's cool. So let us begin the show. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Danny. Thank you for inviting me for uh, Plum Solution Meetup, Virtual Meetup. And uh, I've been following Denily from quite a long time, you know, before I was an MVP and uh, we know each other. She's a great financial modeler and uh, really lovely. And thank you for inviting me over here. So I'm connecting all the way from Saudi Arabia, as Ms. Denily told, let me quickly introduce myself. I'm Faraz Sheikh, Microsoft MVP, MCD, uh, MIE. I am a Microsoft Office Master Certified, Microsoft Excel Expert and Word Expert. Uh, a YouTuber, blogger, and I organize Saudi Arabia meetups and um, where I invite speakers like as Danali does, the great speakers around the globe, and uh, they come and they talk uh, awesome stuff. And uh, yes, uh, by profession, I'm a supply chain guy. I love Excel and I love logistics. I love automation. So these are my three love life, Excel, automation, and logistics. So I always try to find uh, do something which can automate and easy the task. And my mission is with my friends over here to help the community, uh, provide them the easiest solution and uh, with the Microsoft Office application so that it can make their job quicker and easier. And my passion is always to gain and share the knowledge and definitely I'm here to share my knowledge and equally gain from uh, the participants over here. So, so yeah. So if you might be wondering where is Saudi Arabia? So let me tell you that I'm located over here near to the coastal side and it's a wonderful industrial city in Saudi Arabia and uh, it's a wonderful place. So if you're here in Sydney, so right now we are been getting connected from all this place. So anybody can feel free to visit. They can just try to cross the borders from here and they can come by land or they can fly and come back <laughs> over here. So if somebody thinks about Saudi Arabia, they always think sand, it's desert. No, we have lovely places, but desert is really beautiful. Trust me, uh, you will love the desert place. So just- yes, I, I have been to Saudi Arabia and it is very safe. Eric is asking if it's safe to go to Saudi. Yes, it does. Yes, it is, it is, it is. And I have been here since my childhood. So yeah. it's a lovely place, you know? So these are some cities. Uh, there are a lot of cities to add it, but I just quickly add some few of the cities uh, which I always visit. There's the Mam, Kariad, 
And in Jubail Industrial, it's a, one of the largest industrial petrochemical industrial city in the world. And Abha, have you heard about the snow in Saudi Arabia? There's wow, snow. Wow, I didn't know yeah. that. It was really yeah. hot when I was there. Yes. Uh, so mm -hmm. the, now the weather is changing from cold to hot. So if you go Abha, this region in Saudi Arabia, you will always find the weather is 18 degrees. Wow. Uh, so oh, 18 degrees centigrade. So it's a very cold place and you have desert campings and a lot of great stuff happening over there. And where are you? Uh, I'm placed in Jubail, uh, wow. near in Damam, uh, which is very close to uh, Damam, Jubail Industrial City. So that is the place I am placed over there. Then. So uh, just a quick, let us do some quick scannings of this QR codes. You know, this is the first scan is a quick survey. You can just scan it and there's a quick form. You can please feel free to fill that form. And uh, if you'd like to join the meetup group for Saudi Arabia, uh, then you can just scan this code and you will also find uh, the link over here, which I think I already shared in the video description. So you can feel free to check that out. Oops, let me take it back again. Yeah, so uh, I think Prize wants to find out a little bit more about us. So be sure to do the survey, first of all, for those who are joining us live. Uh, Susan popped that in the chat at the beginning. So um, just fill out that so that um, the data is uh, going to be uh, collected in the background. So that will uh, tell for us a little bit about us. And the other links, I'll share these uh, in the email afterwards also. Yeah. Thanks, Susan. Um, Nero says, I've heard it is a bit tough for women travellers. Not sure. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite interesting as a woman to visit Saudi, <laughs> but it's very safe. Yeah. Okay. You have the scan code for the My Data Summit. Uh, uh, let me also add it that My Data Summit is in Summit, which uh, we are organising it, and that is going to be held in September uh, by 5th, 6th and 7th. So we are inviting all the great speakers so people can uh, come and join over there. So if anybody is interested, just they can just, this is free uh, uh, form, you know, you can just fill your information no, and not notify a, it's, you. It's not ready for registrations yet. Yeah, uh, yeah, not yet, yeah. So you haven't got all the, yeah. yeah all so most right. probably by mid of May, it would be ready. Everything, we are planning to get it ready. So there's pre-registrations available yeah. at this stage. Yeah. I can say that I'm not sure what I'm going to be speaking about just yet, but I'll be one of the speakers, I think. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't sorted out the details just yet. Cool. So let me check the survey. Let me check the form which is there. Yeah, so we've got lots but of... How are we going over there? Sure, you've got lots of uh, responses. And uh, for those of you who've joined us live... Yeah, it's going to be really fun to see some of the data coming through. Perfect. Wow. Okay, so we have some Mac users. I, wonderful. Uh -huh. Great. So let the data come in. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. So all, everybody's using Office 365. So you are using dynamic arrays. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Great. Great. Lovely. Okay, cloud. Okay, so we have few people. Okay, so it will be really wonderful, you know. So uh, I just got an idea of us, you know, in the audience, you know, like how much they are into Power Automate and uh, what is there in their Power Automate. So let's, let's do it. Okay, so let me begin. So let the data come in. Uh, the Power Automate with uh, the power of Power Automation with Power Automate. The goal is always to work smart, not hard, you know. So there are always like a situation in the work, you know, where you try to do some kind of a repetitive task. And I strongly believe, you know, that the systems are made for us. Uh, we are not made for the systems. You know, there are, there are some things which systems can better handle than us, like especially the repetitive task, those are there. So uh, in, that, in that context, which I would like to say that there are great, some, there are some great tools and the tool which we are going to talk about uh, one of the tools, and also we'll try to talk about a little bit about Power Query, if we, the time is there. Uh, Power Automate is a tool which has been unexplored by many of the users. And uh, let me tell you that it comes in the subscription of your office. So if, you're, if you are uh, working in your work environment, then you have that Power Automate. The admin user has to just activate that going in the admin settings. And if you're using Power Automate, uh, uh, for your or personal use, then even you have the access. I'll just show it to you how you can get the access. 
So uh, today the stuff, what we will be looking is we'll be seeing that what is Power Automate. I'll just quickly walk you through the interface of the desktop and cloud, uh, types of connectors, types of triggers and real time projects. And uh, if we have time, I'll try my best to make, uh, let us do it together, you know, one kind of flow. So let's go to the demo machine. Okay, so let me quickly share my screen again. So I can share you my demo machine screen. Mm, we can still, oh yeah, we can see your uh, desktop now. Okay, so I'm going to move my, okay. So here is Windows on my Mac. Uh, by the way, I'm using Palos. So, and uh, so I'm using Palos with Mac. So. That's the reason you can see windows. Okay, so lovely. So uh, to get power automate, uh, having still having a connection issue, just a minute, please. So you have to be using X, uh, my, on Microsoft 365 to get access to automate, don't you? Uh, no, I don't need that. Uh, if I, th there are certain connectors which are free available for uh, Office 365 Home, mm -hmm. and there are some premium connectors uh, which are also there. But you can even buy the premium connections. Uh, so if you're there. on 2019, you can still access it. Yes, yes. Ah, good, good. Okay, so let me share my screen over here. Okay, so this looks better. So once you uh, log into office.com. Okay, so this is a short link which goes over here. Okay, so uh, can you see my screen, Danny? It's okay. Yeah. You're seeing right now with the windows, right? Yeah, we can see the office. Good morning. Okay, good morning. Yes, it's morning over here. So whenever you just go to your office.com, when you log in with your credentials, you land up in this page. So this is right now my uh, work environment, which I'm showing it right now. This is a testing account for me. And once, whenever you come over here, so if you see this four icons over here, which is, uh, let me try to zoom it. Okay, so this icon, what you can see over here. Uh, here, what we can do is once you click over here, okay, and click on all apps, and you'll find Power Automate over here. So once you click on Power Automate, you will land on this page. Now, uh, there, this technology is, there are two different technologies. One is power, means it is the same technology, but Power Automate desktop and cloud. So right now what we are looking is the cloud one. Okay, so this is an interface. What you see is right now on the cloud. And I'll quickly show you also for the desktop as well. So here, uh, once you come, you get this options over here. So this is a home area and you get uh, all this, pre-built automation uh, flows, which are there, the steps which are there. So if I like to save any kind of an outlook in the email from OneDrive, you can do that from Dropbox. There are various uh, possibilities you can do it. Now, you might be asking me that, okay, for us that, uh, but how do we need to write code? No, this is a no code, low code solution. And uh, you just, have to just, it's like a Lego block. You just keep building it and I'll show it to you. So when you uh, think about the flow, okay, there are, uh, there are three different types of triggers, four different types of triggers, which are there we can see over here. The, there's an automated flow, which is like you schedule it on a specific time and then it will start triggering. Let's say that every morning you want to send an email to your team asking them an update about what are the financial statements. So you don't need to write them every day that email. You can just simply automate it, create it over here. And uh, this will automatically start triggering it. Instant flow, this is a flow which we will definitely look and we'll try to build a solution on that. And um, uh, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, not on the automated one. The automated flow is something like when you keep a file on a OneDrive or uh, somebody, if you receive an email, 
So on that way, it is going to automatically trigger. Let's say that you receive an email having an Excel attachment and you want to download it to OneDrive. So in that case, this automated flow would work. Instant flow is like you are just going to click it and it is going to instantly going to run. And the schedule one, which is I mentioned it about that, like you schedule it, like you say that every morning you want to send a mail to your team, then you can just schedule that flow. Uh, desktop flow is the one which you can launch the app and uh, we can we can see the desktop flow also. So now to create any kind of a flow over here, uh, you can just simply click over new from the template. I would encourage you that you try to go and explore the template because in the template, you'll find a lot of connectors. Let's say I would like to just find something about Power BI. And uh, let's say that every time I wanted to run or trigger it or refresh a uh, flow, then you can do that. Uh, one thing what I love about the flow, and I would really like to talk about it, and you might find some great videos by Raza Durani and Leila Itai. Uh, they have some videos on Power Automate approvals. Like, let's say that you wanted to create an approval uh, to your management to get it approved on any kind of a document. So you can just drop that document into OneDrive and then it will automatically start triggering the flow. It will send an email to the hierarchy to approve it once they get approved. And you can just take that printout of that approval and use it as there. Uh, remember this, this approval is really good because uh, the person who have the access can only approve it. It cannot be approved by somebody else. So let's say that if that email comes and you forward it to somebody, it will ask him to log in with their credentials to log in and do it. Uh, so connectors are the things which allows you to bridge that connection. So like the OneDrive, when you want to connect it, those APIs are over here, they get connect and you can then easily uh, uh, connect your information and you can pull the information. So let's come back to this flow area. And there are other stuff also, which I think I'll share uh, Danielly the link of my YouTube video where I have detailed it described about each and everything over here. Now let's coming over here. Uh, once you click on new, or I would say just go over here and click on new or new start from template, or you'll cl click on an instant and you can give a name to your flow. And this is a manual trigger. So every time, whenever you're creating a flow, and if somebody would like to follow along with me, uh, then you can feel free to share them the Excel workbook, which is there. Uh, if they would like to follow along with me. Uh, okay. So I can meanwhile, uh, yeah, I can meanwhile try to check some questions are there. Great, great. So you're going to share a, a workbook that um, that everybody can access and follow along yeah. with you. Okay, I'll just pop that into the chat then. So I've just popped the link to the workbook there so people can follow along if they'd like to. Okay. Okay, so what you can do is you can give the name of the flow over here. You can call uh, by any name, whatever you, whatever you like to call. So I'm just going to call uh, a weather update. So I have this MSN data over here. Now, um, my thing is that, that every time I need to go and get the information from MSN, uh, this specific location or any, any, let's say that we go and change over here to Jubail. Let's do it for Jubail, Jubail, Saudi Arabia. Now this location, I would always like to get the information of uh, how it is going to be looking and what is the high temperature and the low temperature. So certain uh, information I would always like to pull and keep it in my workbook. So what I can do, just excuse me for a minute over here. I'm getting difficulty with the Zoom. Uh, floating. Uh, oh yeah, just get those out of the way. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. So that file that I've just popped into the chat earlier is uh, just going to be a blank spread. It's blank at the moment. And yeah. I think that's where we're going to populate the, the, data, yes. the data. Yeah. 
Yeah. So let's say that you have this location Jubail or you have for Sydney as well. You can add it for Sydney. So uh, this is my cloud. So I'm just going to say uh, weather uh -huh. uh, details. And here, uh, since it is, uh, since there will be no actions on this uh, part, like this is an action, what happens, what it has to do. So here we have a manual one. So is there anything for the manual? No, let's skip this for the time being and we can add it from here also, you know, weather data. Mm -hmm. So once you add a weather data, you have this button over here, flow uh, uh, for manual one, manual trigger. So this will manually trigger. So whenever I press this one, so it will manually get triggered. And uh, let me go and add a new step. Now, once you click on this new step, as I mentioned, you see, it looks like a Lego block. Uh, that's the reason I was telling. Now, there's another block which will get created. So as soon as I search for the connector, uh, as you can see over here, we have a lot of connectors coming up over here for Excel, for business, Excel for Teams, Microsoft, Mails, uh, notification for OneDrive business. Uh, and there are some premium connectors also, which are being, uh, based on the licensing, you can get it. And there are certain services also. So you can feel free to always go and explore this uh, area of uh, uh, the connectors. Let's see now my, uh, now our target is that we wanted to get the MSN weather data. Now, once I select MSN weather, so get the fair forecast for today, okay, or get the current data, okay, or uh, I can just select the get the forecast for today, okay, because that's the way I how I have, created the workbook. So whenever I'm, uh, we are creating the workbook. Okay, so here it is. So this is my workbook. So this is my workbook, which I have created and I have kept it on my OneDrive. So whenever I would like to record that data, it should come over here and it should populate all that information over here. So, Let's go to my desktop, my OneDrive, which is over here, from solutions, and I have kept this workbook on my OneDrive. Now, remember that it should be on your OneDrive account, or it should be on your Google Drive account. The, the files which you have created, this file should be somewhere kept over there, because it should be on the cloud, because it is going to connect to our OneDrive, and then it's going to connect this workbook, and it's going to feed that data over there. So let's close this one. So you know the source where it is now. So I can just simply close this workbook. Okay. I am really sorry for this, but the uh, Zoom is not helping me out today. I can. Can you still see my screen, Renly? Yeah, I can just see your desktop at the moment. So you can see the, um, um, yeah, the one with the colors. Okay. And now we can see the one with the blue. Yeah, I'm trying to, okay. Let me do it like this and let me put it back in like this, okay. Because this thing is coming in between. Okay, so let me try it. Okay, so here it is, yeah, so it's hidden. Perfect. So here I'm going to go. So what we have seen that we have uh, gone to the flow, we have created the flow and we have added the forecast over here, that is the connector. And we are just going to paste the name of that city, uh, mm -hmm. whichever we would like to get the information from. So here I'm just going to select Jubail al Saudi Arabia and, and I'm just going to select in metric and let's save this one. So it's very important that you save your flow whenever you are creating it. And now when I'm going to test it, let me test manual and just test this one. And it's going to ask that whether you want to connect it. And yes, you can see, yes, please connect it. 
and run the flow. Mm -hmm. So it is going to go to uh, the MSN data and it's going to pull that information and we will see what are the information it's been getting pulled out. So let me see over here. Done. And you can see the flow has ran successfully. And you can see all these informations are, so the, our input value was Jubail and it was in metric. And so it has pulled the information, what would be the today's forecast. So it's gonna chances of rain like 34 and we want to get basically the high temperature, low temperature. And we just wanted to, if you click on show more, mm -hmm. uh, the light rains are expected and it will be high in 29. So all these informations are getting feeded over here. Now let's go and edit our flow again. So we now uh, need to put it into the spreadsheet, right? Yes, now our challenge is that we need to put it on our spreadsheet. Yeah. I'm uh, really sorry because at the bottom of my screen, uh, the Zoom, uh, <laughs> Just uh, the, the yeah, okay. is there and uh, unfortunately I cannot touch my Excel workbook, uh, Excel shortcut icon. So I'm just going to use this one. I need to, Get myself with the shortcuts. Okay, so and the information. File. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. yeah so this is a file. Yeah, yeah. So what do we want to have? Date, location, condition, temperature, and uh, temperature low and day summary. So let's go do it. Let's go add a new step. And uh, let's go and search for Excel. Now, when you are selecting Excel, remember that there are two Excel, Excel for OneDrive and Excel for business. Now, Excel for OneDrive is a one which you will be using it for your personal one. If you have Outlook account or a live account, that time you will be using OneDrive. And once you have a business, the business one is like your work account, you will use business. So then only it will be able to connect to the SharePoint or it will be connect, able to connect to your uh, OneDrive account. So let me select for the business. And now what we would like to do, uh, basically we add would a, like to- Add a row, right? Correct. That basically we would like to add a row. So I'm just going to keep it side by side so that we make it easy. Mm -hmm. So what we would like to do is that we would like to add a row of the information. So, so I would say add, let's see something related to add is there. You see, add a key column to the table, add a row to the table. Mm -hmm. So the action, what we will be doing it. So first the thing will get triggered, then the actions will happen. So here, what we are going to trigger it out here, the action, what we wanted to do after the trigger is that you need to add a row. Now to add a row, you need to find the location. Now the location of OneDrive for business, because I know that my file is kept in OneDrive for business. So just excuse me, I would like to show it to you since I cannot reach out to my desktop interface, I'll try to show it to you from my cloud. So this is a file which is kept uh, for my weather data. And let's go back to our mm -hmm. edit information. Thank and the you. library which we would like to connect is for the OneDrive, okay? And in case if you're connecting it to the SharePoint, then you can select the SharePoint site, whichever is there available on your organization. Then the file which we would like to connect is, okay, so the file, what we would like to connect is the Plum Solutions, which is there. We'll go over here and this is that weather data. Mm -hmm. Now, remember that once you build this file, make sure that this is into Excel table. So it needs to be in a table, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah it should be in the Excel table. If it is not in the Excel name? table. Uh, table weather, okay. Yeah, so I just given a name. It's always a good habit to give your table name. Don't keep it mm -hmm. table one, table two. Because if you have a lot of tables, then you will find table one, table two, table three. And then you don't know on which table you're, you're working. Yeah. So it's better to give TBL underscore weather. Okay, and so you should be able to see that from... Yes, drop down. From the, yeah. So now when I will go click over here, table underscore weather. So this is yep. that same table, which we are seeing it over here. So yep. as you can see over here. Okay. 
So as soon as I selected that table, it has pulled all that related columns, see the date, the location, the conditions and summary. And let's say that if you wanted to add later on some kind of a table or something, uh, another column, then you can do that also. And you can then just refresh that and you can just exit it out and let the file get saved and upload. And then you can just refresh it and you'll find that uh, other piece of information also. So here the date. So date is, as you can see that, uh, this is uh, uh, from the previous steps, you know, uh, what this from the previous step, that means it is from the forecast for today. So, so that's all the fields that it can yes. find on the yes. web. Yes. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what I can do is it's always a good habit to give you a, na a name of rename it. Okay. So I'll say that Jubail uh, Saudi mm -hmm. Arabia, I'm going to rename that. So whenever I'll work on it so I can really understand, you know, what is, what is happening? Because if you have another connector coming up with the same details, mm -hmm. then you have weather forecast today, one, two, three, four. I'll just show it to you how it would look when we'll copy that. Uh, let me bring some more space over here. Okay. This looks better. So here, what I can do is I can select the dynamic content, which is there. So mm -hmm. I, if I click on see more, I can get some more information, yeah, the day, yeah, body, yeah. Yeah, so we are searching right now for the date. Uh, so up on the right. Let me, yeah. yeah. So if you just compress that screen, then it gives you all that information. Otherwise, if you click on add dynamic content, mm -hmm. it will show it to you like this. Right. So uh, let us search by date over here. Yeah. Okay. And this is a date and the location, which is over here. So we are going to say the location, which is over here. Mm -hmm. and uh, conditions so conditions are been written over here so see i have added over here no worries i can just select this one and click on conditions so basically all this information is what you see right now uh, it's coming up over here which has been showing the dynamic content are being getting pulled from this forecasted data mm -hmm. so uh, so here, when we wanted to have that high temperature, so I can just write high temperature. I can write the low one, the low, and I can just keep, uh, or in this case, I would just like to keep it a date uh, summary, let's see, yeah. day summary. Mm -hmm. And I'll just save the flow. Now, let me just make it smaller and let's test it. And it's run and test and run and run the flow. Mm -hmm. Done. So now it will run, it will go and get that information. And within fraction second of time, you know, you can find those informations are being getting populated over here. Oh, it's, it's worked. I just refreshed in uh, oh. the link that you gave okay. us. And okay, it okay. Worked. Okay, so maybe sometime in the desktop, you might find some kind of a little delay uh, or something. So oh, no yours isn't updated yet. Yeah, so, but if I open it again. Yeah, it just needs to refresh. So, which I don't want to do it right now, but I have no choice because <laughs> Zoom is not helping me out today. Okay, where the data? Oh, see, it says me the new yeah, version is available. Right. So when I click on reopen, and you can hey, see this information is added over here. There it is. Now, one thing which uh, I would come, uh, many users, they come across and they mention that for us, okay, we have an issue with the a date, you know, because whenever they try to add the date, this is in a, a standard format. So there's a way we can handle this kind of a problem. Okay, so I'll just quickly show it that how can we do that? So all you need to do is, a little bit of understanding the function. Now we'll go in expression, okay? This is the thing called format, okay? Of a format date time. You open the parentheses and here we are going to add that dynamic content. So whenever you see, when you open it, open parentheses, it says the timestamp, the string which is there. So I have to pass that string. So I'm going to go to that dynamic content and I'm going to call that date over here date okay comma so that's my output which is there and the format which will be there i just need to keep it in a single quote remember 
it's not in double quote like how we put it in Excel when you're passing a string value. So here, when I put a single quote, there's two automatically single quotes are there. And in that we need to add DD slash MM, uh, sorry, MM. I, I would like to have the format in MM slash DD, DD, small DD and YYY, small YYY. Mm -hmm. Now remember that this is case sensitive uh, formatting which is there and I have a link which I'll be sharing with uh, uh, you soon on that where you can get all these formattings available so even if you go on uh, the Microsoft website uh, you can find the details about this cool and what language is that um, James is asking uh, this is uh, I'm not sure but it's the script which has been running behind i need to check oh, it okay. yeah 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 and, uh, i hope that answers there. your question amathea about fixing the date format um henry would like to know if it's possible to automate the excel refresh i mean it's every time you go into the excel it will automatically refresh but it it is kind of automatic isn't it yeah it is automatically refreshing it like right now since we have changed the date let me show it to you now i don't need to hit refresh anywhere if i'm using the cloud excel let me open the cloud one so it would quickly you know mm. work and show it to us so this yeah. is a cloud one okay so every time you open it up it will yeah yeah so uh, when I click over here, I say test and I'll click manually and I just say save and run. Run the flow, done. Yeah. And just watch it, see how quick it was. Uh -huh. See on the Excel online, uh, yeah. when you saw that it was very quick. So it has put that information correctly for us. Yeah, now can let's you say that. that the dynamic content is not showing up for him? I'm not sure if we can troubleshoot that. Yeah, sure, sure. Maybe after the, uh, maybe end of that session, we can just have a look yeah. on that. Like what, yeah. is it, what is the issue? And uh, I, I, Nero yeah. would like to, like to know how to add more cities without doing another flow. Okay. If you just need to add another CD, what you can do is the reason uh, what I was mentioning, you know, that you give the name of the cities. So all you can do is just copy, okay? Uh -huh and you can just create another city now right. this is and this I'm is uh, i would say that if you list uh, see you have different possibilities you can work on it this one what you can do is that if you have list of all the cities in an excel workbook you put it in your excel workbook and then call that workbook into the flow and add those cities names so every time it will just run in a loop and it will just add that information so maybe in the future, you know, I can try to make a video on this one and I can, uh, uh, I can, you can, I, I hope that would answer the question. Okay, so here, uh, when you come to the clipboard and you say, get the forecast, now you see that it is saying, get the forecast today, Jubail, Saudi Arabia. And here also it is saying Jubail, Saudi Arabia too. That's the reason I ask you that please give the naming. Mm -hmm. Because here, when you see over here, the dynamic content, which is appearing over here, uh, as you can see, it says over here uh, on the top, it says get the forecast Jubail Saudi Arabia. Okay. Now, when I will come again over here for the for this workbook, when I'll copy and create another table to add it, at that time also it will say two. So I just need to change another city over here. So let's change it to another city. Let's say Sydney. South Wales, you are in South Wales, right? Copy. That's right. Good, let's go to this one and let's rename this. That's very important. And always try to document the things so that when somebody else will use it, he knows very well that what is happening and uh, what the flow is doing. And so it becomes really handy. But if you want to make it somebody his life nightmare or miserable, then just give them any namings and numbers. <laughs> so come here and just paste it. Paste that Sydney. And here we have it. Save. And what I can do is over here. Again, I can cl click over here. Copy. And come to the new step. 
and I can just come over here and say add that. So it is going to copy all that actions what I have done in that one, add row into table. So instead of that, again, I should rename this to Saudi. Do you need to do that or can you not just do them? Yeah, you can, you can still do that. Okay, but it will just add number two to that one. Okay. So just to be having very clear that what is, what are you, on what action are you working? But you need so to add the row for every single yeah. location? Yes. Okay. You can't just do them all at once? Uh, you can do it all the one, uh, all at once. As I mentioned that you can list it out all the cities in one Excel workbook, and then you can loop this action. So mm -hmm. there's an, there would be, I, I would just show it to you, uh, OneDrive and list, list all the rows in the present table. Uh, okay, so yeah. Once you list all the rows in the present table, it will generate an action and uh, it will, you can then just pass that value to this get forecast and it will happen. So you can get multiple, you don't need to create it one by one. So I just want to keep it very simple so that people can follow with me. Uh, uh, so that's the reason I'm doing only just step one by one. So as I mentioned, see, this looks like a Lego block, you know, yeah. so, and I can just put my block up and down, but remember that this action, if I try to put something about this action, because this is holding the Sydney information, it is going to give me error when I'm going to test it. Yeah. So like this is location right now, what is there for Saudi Arabia? So we just need to quickly go and uh, change this uh, dynamic content, which is over here. Let me get it over here. Okay, so this is a format. Let me this go looks for like code to me. I thought we said it was low code. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's a very simple just to manage the date. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here we have this date. For you, yeah, good. And if you don't like to handle the date, then you can create a formula also in the workbook and that can also seal the deal very easily. So let's remove this all locations, uh, temperature high, and let me close this, let me close this. And again, let's go to the location. I'll add the location. So see, when I get, get forecast Sydney, uh, New South, so it really gives me an understanding what is happening. So yeah. if you scroll down more, See, you also get for Jubail Saudi Arabia. So <laughs> if you don't give your naming properly, then you might get an error and uh, this would really give you some wrong information. Then it will show having a rain in Sydney then and maybe snow in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> so you get the wrong forecast at getting logged in your uh, workbook. So you have to be very careful on that. So let's uh, go and click on conditions, that dynamic conditions for conditions. High temperature. Temperature again, high wind, temperature again, the low and the summary, summary for the day. So all this information is getting saved. Safe. Okay, perfect. Now what will happen? So I'm just going to quickly delete this two rows, okay, delete the rows and just save this flow. So Mark is saying if you press F5 to refresh, the second line appears. Yeah, it would. Now, it should appear. Run. now you see Saudi Arabia has got added, Sydney also got added. So you can see how quickly that information got pulled over here into the workbook and we have that uh, this, uh, this data available over here. I'm not getting Sydney yet. I'm just seeing one line now. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's going to take a little time. Yeah, I'm just getting the one line for Saudi. The two lines have disappeared. So you're, you're checking the workbook, which I have shared it with you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it might just take some time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because maybe this is my development environment right now, what we are seeing it. So this is a development environment. Maybe it might be some kind of a delay would be there. Yeah. But as you can see over here, that information is added. Now I can adjust these blocks. You know, I can just simply go edit over here and I can just move these blocks up. You can see that uh, uh, a nice icon coming up, you know, saying to drop it out. So what it will do, 
whenever I trigger this flow, the trigger is always, remember the trigger, the first thing what will happen, the trigger, like your gun, when you shoot it from the gun, there is a trigger will happen and then the action will happen. As the person will get the target, he will not get the target. So then our actions, what are the actions? So we have to find our actions that uh, the input values, it would be input values or it could be some kind of any actions. We take it for Saudi Arabia, we take it for uh, Sydney and we take it for, uh, we add the information for Saudi, we add the information for Australia and then we push it over here and save it. So you can rearrange it, but as I mentioned, that if I try to do it like this, see, this action cannot be tracked about this action. It's depending because the action Saudi Arabia is depending. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to, if I'm trying to put it about this, uh, it's going to say, give me this error because it has a depending action. What it is depending, it is depending on the weather forecast. So I cannot get the weather forecast before triggering the weather forecast uh, action. So I have to first get the weather forecast, then add it to the workbook. I cannot add it to the workbook without getting the weather forecast. So this is uh, the flow. It's a very ah, simple yes. flow. It's worked. Uh, Henry says that there's just a time lag due to the thousands of kilometers in between us. Yeah. <laughs> and Wei says it worked like a charm. Yes, it, it's well. It just took a few uh, it took, took a few seconds, but it uh, it's coming yeah. now. Yeah, just took a little while. <laughs> So, so far, any questions, generally? Anything? So uh, no, no, we are good with uh, with questions. So, um, yeah, just pop any questions that you have in the chat and we'll address. I've been asking you the questions as we go through. Yeah. So. Great. Uh, Way says, how do we manually trigger it, trigger it now that I'm running it from the test mode? Sorry? How to manually trigger it. So, like you've been um, ref doing it manually, but yeah. you set it up so that it's automated as well, right? Okay. So manual trigger, like right now, so this is our flow which we have created. So these are all the tests, okay? What we have done, the actions are the test actions. So let me say we go over here on the flow. And uh, if you are using, uh, if you have mobile devices, you can just add Power Automate for mobile. And from there, what you can do is you can just uh, sign in with your credentials and you get the flow, uh, fl all these flows, which you can see over here right now, uh, you can see it over there. And you can just click on the play button like run. And once you click the run and run the flow, it is going to run it and I can show it to you over here. We'll be getting another two lines of information coming up over here. So, when you come over here, so let me just walk you through this quickly, that this shows 28 days history. So this says that succeed. So if there is some kind of an error, it will show you an error. And uh, these are the connectors, what you're using it. And uh, you can share it. If you're working in an organization, you have a share access, you can share this one to somebody. You can bring the people, invite the people, you can collaborate it and you can build your flows. You can delete it, you can make a copy and uh, there are certain analytics tools as well. So what does this looks test, you know? So in case if you if your flow gets uh, failed, so you can come to here and you can see each of the actions and you will get an error. And that based on that error, you can uh, work out on it and you can, you can uh, debug that problem, which is over there. Now, uh, since we have whatever the flows you have created, it will come here. I can give you another example. I, I would like to hear from people, you know, what are their automation thoughts when, when they are thinking about automation uh, of doing some kind of a work of what it would be, what they would be thinking. Well, so I just imagine you. this weather data. Now, yeah. just imagine now this weather data we have just created uh, like this over here. Okay. Now I can even email this information to the people. So like, let's say I put a new step. I would say Outlook. Now, when I click Outlook, again, I get two options over here. One is Outlook 365, uh, Office 365 Outlook and Outlook.com. Remember, this is my personal account, personal one, and this would be the work one. Similarly, like Gmail, if you have Gmail, I've been never using Gmail, very less. I'm a fan of Microsoft. And so you, Google can as well. so, so you can use the Gmail connector, you can connect it, it will ask you, well, let's say that when I say send email, so for the first one, it will ask me to connect that API because you need to build that connection 
so that it can take the action. So once I click on sign in, it will ask me to do the Google sign in. Uh, so I can just add my account and I can just say yes, yes, and I can authenticate that connection. So I right now I'm not going to do that. Ones that as financial modelers, uh, we use a lot of, um, I know I've done a lot with uh, automating exchange rates or mm -hmm. basically anything that is on, mm -hmm. um, on the web that's in a table, you can download that and then use it in your financial models. And I know that, uh, that you've grabbed the meetup information from my site where we've listed all of the events and then you've pulled that through onto, yeah. your, um, onto your blog, which is, um, which is a great use of Power Automate. Uh, I'll just quickly show it to you, excelexciting.com and uh, slash meetup. And let me try to. So, so right now the screen, what do you see? Uh, the Excel exciting slash meetup. Uh, these are all the different meetups which are been taking place in the community. Now, this is a real project, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so if somebody would like to come and join London Meetup, they can just click on London Meetup and it will take them to the London Meetup. So That's this right. is... This is I automated have, through Power Automate, right? No, this is manually been done. Oh. Now, when we come over here, this information is automated over here. Ah, uh, okay. So as you can see over here right now, for the month of April, we have this event right now 29 so if you click on plum solutions over here it will automatically divert you to the plum solution page yeah and you can come over here so let's say that if there are different meetups brand uh, company uh, different meetup groups are there like baku london uh, and other groups which are there if you I just select those meetups happening all over the world yeah yeah so yeah. like may it should give you for the may right now mm -hmm. what is coming up in month of may so month of may again for you it is there so yeah. these all informations get pushed up and automatically when the meetup is finished it goes and it logs the information over wow. here for the past meeting. Are there recordings there as well? Yeah, recording wow. as well. Yeah, I just, Amazing. that one I'm doing it manually. Uh, maybe once in a month or twice in a month, I just go and add oh. manually wow. the meeting link. So, but hand, getting the information from the flow, I don't mind showing you the flow, how it looks. Yeah, Amathea wants to know if you have a blog post on how that calendar was set up. And Nero ah. said, you are awesome. Yes, you are. Thank you. Um, just quickly, just allow me to log in. Okay, we've got about five minutes. Oh, okay. Go. Yeah, so uh, okay. let me know if there's any, um, anything else to yes, share. Yes, um, we've got one, to... just one question, I think. Oh, no, two questions. So have you got time to, um, to answer those questions for us? Or is sure, there more sure. you want to show us? Sure. I just want to quickly show about a desktop technology, which I don't want to miss it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that is really lovely. You're going to love it. Because even in that, I have made an automation and there is a video which uh, I have already created where I used to organize the meetup. Uh, so uh, when somebody is organizing a meetup, remember that there is a lot of uh, back-end work is there. There's a lot of challenges is there that you need to send an email to the speaker. You have to arrange his pictures. You have to arrange the information. You have to attach it. You have to YouTube scheduling everything. So that, that it used to take me like around like two to three hours that time. Uh, so I just cut it down and I just completed that activity in four minutes by using Power Automate Desktop. Wow. So, I have that video link and uh, I would love to share that. Let me yeah, yeah. I'll just screen. send it to me afterwards and I'll share that with everybody. Yeah, I'm sure, sure. they're interested in seeing that. Yeah. So right now what you can see, this is a different flow, uh, which is a meetup one, which I mentioned. Uh, it has a lot of uh, crazy stuff going on inside. Cool. So you can see a meetup that is completed and some, this is a manual one. So whenever the email is coming, so see, there are some flows which has got failed. So I need to go and check them why it has got failed. Yeah. So let me see the completed one. So, so you can see it has all succeeded. So whenever the status automatically gets changed in the workbook, uh, whenever the status is getting automatically changed as closed, it mm -hmm. is going and moving it to the new workbook. Uh, mm -hmm. It is moving the information to another. Now, remember these are tables, so you can just play around with them 
copying that information and then deleting it. So by that way, you know, you are able to handle this one. And you really need to try uh, Microsoft uh, 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 tech community for Power Automate is a great place. I learned a lot of things from there. There are some great people, those who are there, they are talking about uh, uh, there are great solutions available from there and you can, you, can, you can take the idea and you can then generate your own idea and you can work it. So let me quickly show you about a desktop, which is, which I would not want anybody to miss it out. Okay. So let's say that this workbook is uh, created. So again, the Zoom window is not helping me out. <laughs> okay, so Windows 11. Okay, let me try it out like this. Okay, perfect. So Power Automate. So this is Power Automate desktop. Let it get launched. Okay, so I have just created one uh, very simple one, uh, simple flow where this is the meetup information from, I taken a screenshot from Palm Solutions, which is there. I just took a screenshot and uh, I have just added the screenshot on my screen. Now, there is an easy way using Excel, Power Query, uh, you can just connect it Excel with the Power Query and you can get that meetup information as I mentioned, Daniela, to get that exchange rent. People can use the Power Query. Uh, they can connect the data via Power Query, Excel get data for the web, uh, which you can find it over here. Get data, get data from the web and you can just paste the link and you get all that information. Mm -hmm. So let's assume that I got this information of all the meetup links which are over here. Uh, all the meetup information links which are here, unfortunately, they I have received it in a screenshot. Now, I don't have that much of time to go and write it. I just needed to have it in a proper text format. So this is a desktop version, what you're seeing right now. So what, as we have seen in the cloud, uh, one which is over here, I'm again really sorry, you know, I'm getting this difficulty with Zoom uh, because it is blocking the way in the screen. So uh, as we have seen on the desktop one, uh, like how it was showing to us uh, uh, the desktop. So you can call the flow from the cloud to the desktop one and you can run this flow. So let's say that if you have that flow of weather forecast, you are creating it. And then you wanted to call the flow on the desktop. That's a premium connector, remember? And you can test it out that free premium connector. Uh, there's a certain number of days you can check it out. And that premium connector will allow you to fire up Power Automate, but you have to make sure that your machine is working, it's, it's open. And then you can take the information from there also and you can plug it over here and you can, you can, you can do magic with that. So uh, to create it, you just need to click over here, click a new flow. So once you click it on new flow, it is going to create and it's again going to ask you the flow name first. So I have already created this flow. Let's go and create one new. And is it pretty much the same whether you're doing? Yeah. So Henry says, is there anything that the desktop can do and the cloud can't do? Or are they essentially the same in terms of functionality? No, uh, the desktop can only handle the desktop activities which are there, but you can still do a lot of activities from the desktop. Let's say that you wanted to do web scraping. You can do that web scraping through the desktop one. You so can the get cloud data. has more functionality. Yeah, you can, you can have it. The cloud has its own functionality. Desktop has its own functionality. There is, uh, I cannot say that it, it is more superior. The cloud is more superior desktop. But they're a little, little bit different. Yes. Right. So, Let's say that this is that Excel. Uh, let me delete this one from here because I was just testing it before the meetup. So let's say that this is this file which is over here. Okay, and I need that information into a text folder. So what I can do, this is my canvas. In this canvas, there are actions over here and those variables are getting created. Now I'm not going to write any single line of code. I'm just simply going to say, uh, OCR, most of the people they might be knowing, optical character recognition, OCR. So when you type OCR, you have 
OCR from Cognitive Services from Microsoft. You can get that uh, API subscription key, but we are going to use the free one. So we are going to say extract the text with OCR. That's character, rec character recognition, right? Yes, yes. So we are going to use the engine text rack engine, okay? And when we say screen, so uh, it will ask you whether you want to do a screen one or you want to do fairground or I would just say image. And when you select image, it will ask you that, okay, give me that image which you wanted to do the conversion. So I'm going to go to my desktop and I will say, hey, just select this image and I'll say, okay. The whole specified area or certain area, I would say just holds for its specified, whole specified source. And this is a variable OCR text. So it is automatically creating that variable. You don't need to worry. It's just a basic one. And then what we will do is that again, we will come over here and I'll just write text. Okay. So I'm not that familiar with much with, maybe I'm not familiar with Power Automate, uh, but I love Power Automate desktop and I'm familiar. With it. I'm just understanding that somebody might be not familiar. So let's say text. Uh, so in the, when he type text, there is a lot of other information which are getting over here. So I would just like to like to write a text, okay, in a text file and the file path would be on the desktop itself only. And I will call this as my data dot txt. I need to give that extension and click okay. And text to write, what is the text you would like to write it? So you would like to write the text as OCR text and let's just go and select that. And if suppose somebody runs this flow again, what it has to do is, does it have to overwrite it or append it? I would say just overwrite it. And I would say, okay. And now let me cross my fingers and run and play. Okay, so I got an error over here. The reason why I got an error, I know because I have given the wrong <laughs> name, you know? So it should be image path. Okay, it's fine. The image path is over here. Let me select it. Make sure that you update and type. Okay, let's try it with Windows OCR. Let's try it this one. Perfect. So it worked with window. Yes. And you get it. Or oh, when you click on this text, you can see there that it is. Wow. Yes, everything Amazing. is in the text. Wow. And <laughs> even you can, yeah, even you can fire up Excel, like if you say Excel, and uh, you have all that actions happening in Excel. So these are advanced actions. And you can launch the Excel from here. You can create your flows. You can create your subflows. And uh, I would share that video that how I was managed to save so much of my time creating yes. it only just in like four minutes. Uh, and it was really lovely. Great. So I then now that. I think it's time to take some questions. And No, I think we're good. And we, we're pretty much out of time. And um, I've been sort of asking the questions as we go through. So I think we're, I think we're good. But people can contact you on LinkedIn, right, for us. So if anybody wants to ask you any specific questions uh, or follow you uh, because you are always sharing uh, content on your blog and on your YouTube channels as well as your meetup so people can uh, certainly get in touch with you that way. Sure, sure they can reach out to me. Fantastic. Thank you so, so much for us. And I will send out a copy of the recording um, and I'll put a link to all of the things that we've talked about. So thank you so much for us. Thank you, everybody, for your participation. And I'll see you.